Hi everyone, it's Albert again, co-director of this year's national tournament. As you know, running a Science Olympiad national tournament is no easy feat and it requires a great team with people like Spiros, who I have here with me here today. Spiros is a mathematical physicist at the Institute of Quantum Information and Matter and also serves as the outreach director. Thanks for taking the time to speak with me today, Spiros. Can you tell me a little bit about what you do here? Yeah, sure. Um, first of all, Albert, I think you know that what you do here is a Herculean effort, like putting together the national tournament, working non-stop with your team is very impressive. That's why I'm very happy to always support these efforts. Uh, outside of some you know, of the work that I do with you on Science Olympiad, I, I do research uh, and then outreach. So as part of the Institute for Quantum Information and Matter, I have the opportunity to, to study some very fundamental aspects of the quantum realm. Uh, anywhere from how do we build scalable quantum computers to where does space and time come from. You know, so there's some of the deep things that everyone here at the Institute for Quantum Information and Matter gets to study and it's very exciting because this generation that is watching this and the next generations are actually going to have the toolkit to manipulate things at the quantum level, which is something I would consider science fiction until very recently. And in fact, this is exactly what I bring to, to the outreach that I do, where I go and work with Hollywood, like Marvel Studios, and then I introduce elements of this quantum realm, these powers, into the movies like Ant-Man, Ant-Man and the Wasp, and then Captain Marvel. I see. So I know quantum is like a really hot topic um, in today's like science field. Can you tell us more about what quantum means and what your research is like? Yeah, so quantum is pretty powerful. Usually we think of quantum as the theory of physics at the most microscopic level, where you have the ability as a particle to be at two places at the same time, right? You know, to be able to travel back in time. The rules that we are used to kind of fall apart down at that level. And what we're trying to do again here at Caltech and universities and labs around the world is to try to blow up to our macroscopic human scale some of the superpowers that you can find within the quantum realm. Oh, that's really cool. Now, you've got a Marvel, and I'm a big Marvel fan, and I'm sure many of our viewers will also be Marvel fans. So can you tell us what that Bison role is like? Yeah, so I got a call from Marvel Studios about seven, eight years ago now, 2014, and uh, Paul Rudd needed some help as one of the writers, actually, not just the star of Ant-Man. And she wanted to know what happens when you go microscopic, when you go very small, like size of an ant, you want to understand the physics of it. But when I got there, I guess I convinced them that they should go way smaller than an ant, at the level of atoms and below. And at that level, you have quantum properties like superposition and entanglement, which then end up making the second movie, Ant-Man and the Wasp, as well. And I remember telling them, you know, down at that quantum realm, right, the source code of reality, you can manipulate things, and if you know how to do this, you may be able to actually change the very fabric of space and time. You may be able to time travel in new ways and teleport. So a lot of the things that superheroes, the powers that they have, you know, when you have different stones, right, the Tesseract, the, different, the, the Power Stone and all these ones, they have their powers drawn from within quantum physics. And that's why they were very excited, and it has, the quantum realm has now become a big part of the next phases of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. That's really amazing, and I'm so glad we can bring topics like quantum into you know movies and stuff that more people can see. Um, one last question. I know uh, you've been our club advisor for a while, and I've been a strong supporter of Science Olympia since the beginning, when we started here, basically. Do you have any final advice for the competitors as they go into competition day, or maybe as they go into college as well? I think, first of all, it's impressive that you have made it, like as far as you have made it, with this determination, perseverance, you have school, and on top of school, you're doing something amazing like that. This is very impressive. Consider just like in your future, continuing to have fun like this. You know, you can do hard things, deep things, but if you take it slow and enjoy the process, to make friendships that can last lifetimes, then you will be like oh, Albert at some point, right? You'll continue giving back to that community because it was such a big part of your life. Uh, thanks so much, Chris. All right, that wraps up our time with Spiros today. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us, and we'll catch you soon. Good luck, everyone. Bye.